네, 여러분 식사 즐겁게 하셨죠? 자, LH 글로벌 비즈니스 컨벤션 오늘 이른 오전부터 함께하고 계신데요. 오늘 함께 성장하는 LH라는 주제로 함께 이야기 나눠보고 있습니다. 한 베트남 세션에 이어서 이번에는 한 미얀마 세션으로 넘어가 보도록 하죠. 한 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지에 대해서 두 번째 세션 시작하겠습니다. 안녕하십니까. 바쁘신 와중에도 귀한 시간을 내시어 온라인 또는 오프라인으로 LH 행사에 참석해 주셔서 진심으로 감사드립니다. 저는 두 번째 미얀마 세션 진행을 맡은 한국토지주택공사 미얀마 사업단 서성미 My name is 서성미 and I'm from the project office within LH that deals with Myanmar projects. We will now begin this session. As you can see on this slide, the agenda will be first and foremost starting off with a presentation on Korea Myanmar Economic Cooperation Industrial Complex by Mr. Kwak Kwan Gun, Director of LH Myanmar Project Office. And then after that, we will view a video that shows information about the KMIC that will last about seven minutes. After that, Mr. Hong Seok Woo, General Manager at Shinan Bank, will make his presentation entitled Accompanying for a Successful Entry into Myanmar. And then after that, we will listen to uh, Mr. Ko Se Hun, lawyer at Chi Pyeong LLC, with the title of Investment Environment and Precautions to Take into Consideration in Myanmar. After that, we will have a CSR video viewing, and then that will conclude this session. First of all, allow me to introduce Mr. Kwak Hwan Gun, Director of LH Myanmar Project Office, to make his presentation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kwok Hwan Gun from LH. I'm the director of the Myanmar Project Office. Uh, this is really not a good time because we've just had lunch, and you might feel a little bit uh, tired, but I hope you stay focused because we've prepared very hard for this. I'll talk about the overall project, uh, the future direction for development, and the overall uh, supply and future plans. Let's look at the current state of this project. Uh, the project is led by KMIC, Korea Myanmar Industrial Complex. KMIC is a complex, industrial complex, and is about 680,000 pyongs. As you can see, it is located at Yangon and is about 25 kilometers away from the Yangon International Airport. It's about 40 kilometers away from the Yangon port. An access road will be constructed in the future, and that means that you can reach the complex by uh, car from the airport in 25 minutes. This is the background of the project. In 2009, uh, September, LH and uh, Myanmar 
signed a joint venture uh, MOA and uh, was approved. Then, uh, after the joint venture was established, uh, we had a groundbreaking ceremony with the presence of uh, President Moon. This year, despite uh, the COVID crisis, we've completed uh, the construction design, and with the Kerion Construction Consortium, we signed a construction contract. KMIC uh, is uh, running a pre-reservation, uh, land reservation system, and I'll talk about that today. This is how uh, the construction uh, is going to proceed. LH has about 40 percent of equity, Global Seiya has 20 percent, and Myanmar, Ministry of Construction, holds 40 percent of ownership. Korea's EDCF provides funding, and it also provides infrastructure construction. The Myanmar Ministry of Construction provides other uh, land-related uh, rights and services. So this structure enabled us to proceed with the project despite the COVID crisis. This is the aerial site of uh, the industrial complex. And as you can see, the topography is very flat without any hills. Uh, the overall development concept is to create a Korean-style smart green industrial complex. We want the optimal environment uh, backed by excellent infrastructure. Next is about land, the plans for land use and the overall layout. Uh, 380,000 and uh, 300,000 pyongs will be sold in first phase and second phase. 70% of the land will be for industrial use and 5% will be for residents. And 20% is for roads, water treatment facilities, etc. On the right hand side, you see the layout of the different industries uh, components, assembly, logistics, warehouse, construction material, food, a textile, and apparel. As you can see, we have clustered the industries to enhance the efficiency of the complex. This is the external infrastructure plan. As I talked about earlier, uh, there will be about a five kilometer road built from Yangon to this complex, and it'll have four lanes. An eight kilometer of transmission line will be built so that a stable supply of electricity will be possible. Uh, the water will be supplied by the Kalitao Dam, which is about 12 kilometers away, and the there will be water treatment facility, water purification facilities within the facility. This whole construction of infrastructure will cost about 70 billion, and uh, the Ministry of Construction of Myanmar is in charge of this external infrastructure. This is the implementation plan. First of all, I'll talk about the current state of the industrial complex in Yangon. In Yangon, there are 34 industrial complexes, but in the recent two years, there hasn't been any major supply of new industrial complexes. The existing complexes had problems in terms of roads and electricity. Furthermore, there is a limited amount of new sites available, and the existing industrial complexes don't have any uh, much empty space. So. That is why uh, their leases are quite expensive. 
As a result, if you compare the industrial complexes nearby Yangon, you see that in terms of Tilawa Sandan, the price is 85 per square meters, and uh, the sales have been completed to the second stage. Mingladen has been selling uh, the lots until 2012, and uh, the price uh, of the lease is about $90 per square kilometer. Square meter, I'm sorry. Hulayang Ingdaya complex costs about $180 per square meter, and that includes the lease plus building rent. Now I'll talk about the reservation system for the industrial complex qualification will be companies or individuals who want to become tenants of the complex. And as you can see, Zone A will be the first phase uh, to be uh, sold. It amounts to 380,000 pyeong. Uh, as you can see, you can go to mykmic.com, which is the website for the joint venture, and the overall schedule can be found there. Uh, it is a first-come, first-served basis, and that is how the lots will be sold. The process will start in January of 2021. We'll start receiving applications uh, through online on the 20th of January. Online reservation uh, will be made, and then a reservation fee is uh, paid in. Land reservation agreement will be signed afterwards, and then a land sublease agreement will be signed. And this whole process will go on until the end of 2021. The reservation fee is about 5,000 US dollars. This is the overall price, supply price. It's about $72 per square meter. That means uh, 260,001 per pyong. As you can see here, Depending on accessibility and location, the lots are the zones are divided into S, A, B, Z zones. So seventy dollars is uh, the standard. S is one hundred and eight percent. B, A is one hundred five percent. B is one hundred and three percent, and C zone is ninety nine percent of the standard price. I, uh, please refer to uh, this map to see the overall pricing per zone. Uh, this is the uh, payment terms, as you can see. 10% uh, down payment is required, and there will be four installments of 50% every four months. The remaining 15% uh, will be paid when uh, the the company locates into the complex. This is how support will be provided. KMIC is working uh, together with nine other institutions, uh, such as COTRA, Kaibo, Exim Bank, IBK, etc. So nine institutions have been working together from 2019 as a one-team Korea to provide comprehensive support to the companies becoming tenants of the industrial complex in Myanmar. In the future, we will be 
creating an easy service center within KMIC. Myanmar has now made it possible to establish companies and apply for investment and file tax returns online. So KMIC wants to only uh, provide compact and essential services to reduce the burden of paying management fees. This is our future plan. A land reservation uh, will be publicized today, and online application will start in January next year. In February next year, land reservation agreements will be signed. And for your information, construction will start from December 24th of this year and will end or be completed at the end of 2022. However, from the second half of 2022, it will be possible to use the lands. KMIC's goal is to provide a quality factory sites at an affordable price. And also through the Easy Service Center, we will provide service to the tenant companies, including administrative procedure support, etc. By providing such efficient services, we will be able to lower the overall operation uh, cost for the tenant companies. This concludes my presentation on KMIC. For your information, uh, LH conducts about 35 projects in 19 countries. So I'd like to take this opportunity to mention the Korea-Vietnam project, which is undertaken by LH. This is uh, the Korea-Vietnam Economic Cooperation Industrial Complex. And it is uh, located in Hengyan. And it is a Korean type industrial complex. We will break ground in the first half of 2021 and will be supplying land next year as well. For those of you who are interested in overseas industrial complex, I am uh, confident that this will be a very interesting opportunity for you. LH has been working with Vietnam, Indo India, Malaysia in order to uh, advance into these countries and also promote the new southern policies. We also want to provide opportunity for Korean companies to go overseas. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kwak, for that presentation on the Korea-Myanmar Economic Cooperation Industrial Complex. The pre-reservation notification has gone up on our uh, site about the reservations for the sites included in this KMIC. So please visit our website www.mykmic.com, you'll be able to get more detailed information. Next, we'll view a seven-minute video about the KMIC. Asia Good on.
미얀마는 어떤 곳인지 한번 살펴볼까요? 인도 차이나 반도 북서부, 중국과 인도 사이에 위치한 미얀마는 13세기 동방 견문록의 마르코폴로가 황금의 땅이라 예찬했던 나라입니다. 국토 면적이 한반도의 약 3배 정도. 인구는 우리나라와 비슷한 5,400만여 명이고요. 풍부한 천연 자원과 찬란한 역사 문화 유산을 가진 나라입니다. 하지만 오랜 군사 독재로 그동안 국제사회에서 고립되어 왔었는데요. 2016년 신정부가 출범되면서 본격적인 개방이 시작되었습니다. 개방 이후에는 정부의 적극적인 경제개혁으로 매년 6, 7%의 빠른 경제성장을 이뤄오고 있습니다. 미얀마는 앞으로의 성장 잠재력도 매우 높은 국가라고 평가받고 있는데요. 중국과 인도, 그리고 아세안을 연결하는 아시아의 핵심 위치에 있으면서도 아직까지 개발이 되지 않은 미개척 국가라는 점 그리고 석탄, 광물 같은 천연 자원이 풍부하고 평균 연령 27세에 젊고 풍부한 노동력을 가진 나라이기 때문입니다. 미얀마의 경제 활성화 정책으로 해외 자본 유입이 촉진되면서 대한민국 기업들의 미얀마 진출 역시 가속화되고 있는 상황인데요. 미얀마의 여섯 번째로 큰 투자국, 대한민국은 미얀마 정부와의 합작으로 미얀마 경제 수도인 양곤 인근에 섬유, 봉제, 건설, 정보통신 등 다양한 업종의 기업들과 산업 인프라를 갖춘 대규모 산업단지를 조성하고 있습니다. 바로 한국 미얀마 경제협력산업단지 KMIC인데요. 대한민국의 산업단지 조성 노하우와 우수한 기술력으로 미얀마에 최초로 조성하게 되는 한국형 산업단지입니다. 위치는 양곤 북측 야옹리핀 지역이며 전체 부지 면적은 224만 9천 제곱미터입니다. 대한민국의 LH와 미얀마 정부가 각각 40%씩을 투자하고 글로벌 세아가 20%를 투자해 합작 법인을 설립하였고요. 이 합작 법인이 사업 시행을 맡았습니다. 그중 LH는 합작 법인을 대표해 전반적인 경영을 관리하고 미얀마 정부는 정부 소유의 토지를 제공한다고 합니다. 또 미얀마 정부는 우리 정부의 원조 자금을 지원받아서 전기, 상수, 진입도로 등 산업단지 외부 인프라 구축도 할 계획이라고 하니까 미얀마에 한국 자본이 들어가서 새로운 산업도시 하나가 생긴다고 봐야겠습니다. 이 한국 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지 KMIC의 시작은 2013년 미얀마 정부의 제안에서부터 시작되었습니다. 이후 LH에서 타당성 조사를 거쳐 사업 추진을 결정하였고 사업 대상지 선정, MOA 체결, 인허가를 거쳐서 지난해 합작법인 설립과 기공식까지 마쳤습니다. 현재는 설계 착수 등 본격적인 산업단지 조성에 돌입하였는데요. 앞으로 부지공사와 투자 유치, 분양 등을 단계별로 추진하여서 KMIC는 한국과 미얀마가 상생하는 산업단지로 성장, 대한민국 기업의 아세안 진출 교두보 역할을 하게 될 것입니다. 한국 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지, 어떻게 조성되는지 좀더 자세히 알아볼까요? 부지가 있는 야옹리핀 지역은 미얀마 양곤시에서 북측으로 10km 떨어진 곳입니다. 30분 거리에 양곤 공항이 있고 1시간 거리에 양곤 항구가 있으며 양곤 만달레이 고속도로와 인접하여 교통, 물류 접근성이 뛰어난 장점이 있습니다. 또한 인근에 80만 인구가 있어 저렴하면서도 풍부한 노동력을 확보할 수가 있습니다. 이런 좋은 여건들을 갖추고 있는 곳이다 보니 사전조사 결과 전 세계 많은 기업들이 입주할 것이라는 예측 결과가 나왔습니다. 사업단지의 규모는 224만 9천 제곱미터 정도입니다. 여의도만한 땅덩어리에 약 135개의 기업들이 입주할 수 있는 단지로 설계가 되고 있습니다. 미얀마의 경우 도로, 상수도, 전력 등의 산업 인프라는 아직 미흡한 상태인데요. 
미얀마 정부가 우리나라 유상 차관을 지원받아서 구축한다고 합니다. 산업단지 내에는 입주기업 지원센터를 설치해서 기업들이 인허가 같은 행정 업무도 편리하게 처리할 수 있도록 지원할 예정이라고 하고요. 입주하는 기업들에게는 세제 혜택을 비롯한 다양한 혜택들도 주어진다고 합니다. 지난해 기공식 때에는 우리나라 굴지의 경제금융기관들이 MOU를 체결하기도 하였는데요. 한국수출입은행, 한국무역보험공사, 코트라 등 9개 경제금융기관이 한국 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지에 입주하는 기업들을 지원하기로 하였습니다. 이 기관들이 원팀 코리아를 결성해서 산업단지에 입주하는 기업들을 전방위로 지원할 예정이라고 하니 정말 든든하겠습니다. 미얀마는 최근에야 개방된 미개척 국가입니다. 그만큼 발전의 여지가 크다는 얘기겠죠. 게다가 중국, 인도와 아세안 34억 명의 소비자를 연결하는 지리적 장점과 풍부한 노동력을 가진 나라이기도 하고요. 오늘 소개해드린 한국 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지는 위치는 미얀마, 시설과 지원은 한국형, 아세안 지역에서는 처음으로 LH가 주관하여 개발되는 한국형 산업단지입니다. 다변화된 세계 경제 흐름 속에서 국내 기업들도 발빠르게 해외 시장에 진출해서 성공한 케이스들이 덜어 있는데요. 값싼 노동력과 해외 시장 교두보 확보를 위해 해외 진출을 희망하는 우리 기업들에게 한국 미얀마 경제협력 산업단지는 매우 좋은 기회가 될 것입니다. 지금까지 KMIC Thank you very much for uh, viewing the video that introduces the Korean Myanmar Industrial Complex. You can view this video again on our SNS platform. So I hope that you will view it once again for detailed information. Now we'll move on to the next presentation. The next presentation will be delivered by General Manager Hong Seok Woo of Shinan Bank about supporting and accompanying successful entry into Myanmar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to present Shinan Bank's presentation about accompanying a successful entry into Myanmar. I actually worked in Myanmar for several years. Uh, and therefore, I was able to gain more knowledge and expertise about working in Myanmar. So the information that I will present to you today is based on that type of information. And I have witnessed how the officials in, Ma, in Myanmar provide a lot of support as well as credible uh, processes and systems, so I would like to start off with that note. I'd like to extend my gratitude to the officials of LH for allowing me to make this presentation. And to begin, I would like to give you some information about Shinan Bank and as well as Shinan Bank's Yangon branch. Shinan Bank was the first Korean bank to enter into Myanmar in September of 2016. We provide corporate finance services to the uh, entities that are active in Myanmar. And this is the picture of the Yangon branch of Shinan Bank. It is located in Myanmar Plaza. KMIC to the center of Yangon. Uh, it is not too far, and it is located on the main road that uh, you will be accessing. Shinan 
bank is active in 20 countries around the world through 154 branches. We usually support many Korean firms in their international activities and at the same time provide local customers with financial services. But now I'd like to give you some information about the financial institutions in Myanmar. The financial market in Myanmar opened in 2015. The financial market was uh, very uh, less developed at the time of entry because of a long period of isolation prior to that. However, during the last five years, there's been a lot of growth. But there are a lot of policy development that needs to make place. The foreign investors have to make use of local deposits and collateral, so that provides a lot of difficulties for companies who want to invest and be active in Myanmar at the current phase. Now I'd like to give you some information about the financial transactions in terms of investment and returns. Transfer of funds is possible, and you can make use of the transferred fund as soon as it has been uh, confirmed. You have to be able to provide a confirmation of the transfer funds to MIC. And in terms of borrowings, uh, it is possible to receive funds as borrowings, but we have to be able to show that it is within that threefold of the capital of that company. However, for MIC approved firms, the limit is increased to four times. Also, for investment return and repatriation, it is actually being guaranteed by the investment related laws of Myanmar. So the complete repatriation of capital can be done after liquidation, and you need to provide some documentation to prove that. And for dividend type of returns and net profit, you have to be able to show specific statements from the bank as well as an audit report to be able to go ahead and do that. The current products and services that you see here are the ones that we provide at the Yangon branch. There are various deposits products as well as loans and global uh, CMS service as well as corporate internet banking and export and import related activities. However, in terms of derivative products, it is not yet in place and provided in the Myanmar market because of the financial structure's maturity level. Next, I'd like to give you some information about the loan products that we provide. Uh, the conditions may vary according to the credit rating as well as the level of guarantee that can be provided by the companies, but the interest rate is quite high uh, from 10 to 15 percent depending on the different levels. There are diverse uh, range of products and services that we provide, especially for the KMIC tenant companies. Through the One Team Korea agreement, we have several very beneficial products that can be provided to you. The first is in the case of funding that is raised within Korea through the parent company of the company that will be actually going into Myanmar. In that case, you can actually do the capital raising here in Korea and then do a transfer of funds to Myanmar. Or or you may make, want to make use of the local subsidiary. In that case, a credit guarantee related um, documentation and confirmation can be provided to Xinan Bank, and then a standby LC will be opened to the Yangon branch. And there, a very attractive interest rate will be applied for loans that will be provided for the companies that are tenants of KMIC. There are other types of existing products and services as well. If you have an LC that is already existing in the parent company here in Korea, then you can provide a direct guarantee 
for the loans to take place in the local subsidiary. You can also make use of the uh, Korean real estate as collateral and then have a standby LC issued to be able to have loans provided to the subsidiaries in Myanmar. There are other types of loans that make use of credit collateral or deposit collateral that exist in Korea. In the case of urgent uh, fundraising, this may be another solution that you can make use of. Additionally, for exporting companies to be able to repatriate their returns uh, rapidly, we can also provide a short-term export insurance related uh, loan as well, and that is done under the cooperation with Kshore. Next, this is looking at payment and settlement related services. We provide GCMS as well as internet corporate banking. First of all, for internet banking for corporates in Yangon, uh, we actually allow for the parent company uh, executive in charge to give approval. And by making use of that, we can actually expedite the overall flow and process of funding. And for global CMS, the capital management system of the subsidiary and the parent company can be linked together so that you can review from Korea the overall funding processes as well as the capital related uh, status in the subsidiary. So inquiry can be made real time and support and control therefore can be conducted in a more timely manner. Next is information about the support that we provide, especially for the KMIC tenant firms. First of all, the investment funds of the parent company, as well as the capex and opex of the subsidiaries, uh, Shinan Bank will be supporting the financial services for those types of activities. Secondly, our legal advisor, as well as com uh, Korean fluent staff members, uh, uh, included in a five-person dedicated team which will be supporting the KMIC tenant firms on site. A branch or a sub-branch is planned to be opened within the KMIC so that you can have easy access to the financial services on site. Lastly, Shinan Microfinance, which is an affiliate firm of our group, can also provide support for uh, financing of cars in an allotment payment term for people within the subsidiary in KMIC who want to procure equipment and vehicles and so forth. Now I'd like to give you some brief information about the foreign exchange market characteristics of Myanmar, but actually that is included uh, in a slide that you can review later on. Lastly, I'd like to give you a comparison between Myanmar and Vietnam in terms of the economic development. Myanmar has twice the size in terms of territory, but half the population compared to Vietnam. In terms of export products, it's mostly natural gas, uh, rice, and other types of agricultural products, and most of the imports into Myanmar are related to uh, machinery, uh, cement, electronics, and so forth. This is looking at the major economic indices, and in terms of GDP per capita or actual uh, nominal economic growth rate, they are lower than the case of Vietnam. And if you compare it to Cambodia, 
there seems to be much more potential for international trade growth because of the long coastline that you can uh, envisage being made use of. Compared to Vietnam's GDP and foreign investment, as well as the relationships with the U.S. and other neighboring countries, you can see that there's a lot of correlation there. If you look at the lower right-hand side, FDI into the Vietnamese market greatly increased when the policies were changed on an international level. In 2011, when uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton visited Myanmar, there was a sharp rise in investment following that visit. As we saw GDP growth and FDI into Vietnam rise, uh, in Vietnam, this actually coincides with the economic sanctions being removed. From 2006 to 2014, Chinese yuan started to have an appreciation in the market. And from 2006 to 2008, Korean won also went through a similar phase, and therefore the export market in Korea uh, suffered quite a bit during that time frame. And the biggest beneficiary from this situation uh, was when production facilities moved into Vietnam, and that was when we saw a sharp growth of FDI into Vietnam. In the case of Myanmar, with the recent uh, dropping of sanctions, we expect a similar growth path to occur in Myanmar. However, with the inauguration of President Trump, uh, during the Trump administration, it is true that the various types of benefits that were seen in Myanmar through uh, the Obama administration were more or less stopped and were held in pause. Additionally, they suffered from the conflicts related to foreign exchange uh, issues for the U.S. dollar as well as the Chinese one. And that is why it seems like the development and growth were more or less stagnated during this period. I think this was already shown during the LH presentation. Myanmar is a very strategically important partner for the U.S. if it wants to have control over uh, China. So much of the trade actually happens along the Malacca Straits. And many countries neighboring this area actually have to rely on China for much of its energy sources. If you look at the blue arrows, the gas pipeline that links China to Myanmar is something that has been constructed by Teo, a Korean firm, and it is still in operation. And from the Indian Ocean, there's another route for energy import. So there is a possibility to have access to energy sources from the Middle East. And in that case, you don't have to go through the Malacca. With the recent uh, U.S. presidential elections and its outcomes, there are many experts who are expecting a second pivot to Asia to occur during the Biden administration. So 
the diplomatic and foreign affairs uh, trends that we saw back during Hillary's, uh, Hillary Clinton's phase may be expected to reappear in the next administration. And there may be the possibility of more appreciation of the Chinese yuan as well. And that is no noted on this article that is quoted on the bottom of this slide. In that case, a similar case of what happened to Vietnam in 2006 may occur for Myanmar. So that brings us a lot of hope for the future of Myanmar. This is my personal opinion, but Aung San Suu Kyi's NLD uh, recorded a landslide victory in November of this year. And also, the presidential election results in the US give us much hope for the economic development of Myanmar in the future. Such a promising land is being opened, and with the Korea Myanmar Economic Cooperation Industrial Complex that is going to be pursued, I believe that gives all of us a lot of opportunities to join in that economic development and growth. I sincerely hope that Xinan Bank will be your partner during that process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the presentation was made by Mr. Hong so gu General Manager at Xinan Bank, under the title of a company for a successful entry into Myanmar. The last presentation will be made by Ko Se-hun, who is a lawyer at Chipyong LLC, and he will talk about investment environment and precautions to be taken in Myanmar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ko Se-hoon. I'm an attorney at law at Chipyong Law Firm. I spent 2013 and 14 in Myanmar and 2016 to 18 at our Myanmar office. I was actually in Myanmar at the same time as Mr. Hong so gu and we were in charge of all licensing procedures. LH uh, Industrial Complex is something that I've been advising from the initial stage, and I'm currently providing consulting as well. We have a lot of slides today, and and uh, it contains many important information. But I will only go through the essential points in my presentation. We heard about the economic sanctions on uh, Myanmar, and we can see how important uh, the U.S.'s uh, sanctions program is for Myanmar. However, this has been totally terminated, so with an exception of few things, all trade and transactions are liberalized. However, in 2019, due to the Rohingya Muslim incident, a few military leaders uh, have been subjected to uh, sanctions. Other than those, everything else has been liberalized. The overall uh, trend of law in uh, Myanmar is the announcement of the new uh, Myanmar company law. The existing company law was Myanmar Company Act, which was enacted in 1914, a very long time ago during the British colonial period. However, this has been updated and uh, has been revised into the Myanmar Company Law. This contains many updated content, and it's very similar to Korea's Company Act. Basically, the most important thing is that foreigners are now allowed to acquire ownership in Myanmar companies. And another important law is the Myanmar Investment Law. This has also been revised. There are two tracks when you invest in Myanmar. You can be subject to the investment law, or second is to just go the same route as other companies without being 
covered by the Myanmar investment law. The uh, MIL is most important in terms of providing incentives and protection to the investors. Uh, the land use is guaranteed for a certain period at 50 years plus 10 years, etc. There are also tax incentives. Furthermore, this law contains clauses on non-discrimination of investors. Uh, Mr. Hall talked about the finance part, so I'll skip that part. Um, now I'll talk about recent trends. Uh, retail and wholesale has been open to foreign investors recently, foreign investor companies, and the MIC investment permit procedure has been simplified as well. The tax authority has also been uh, renewing their rules. Uh, the Anti-Corruption Act has also been enacted to make the whole of society more transparent. Uh, the uh, tax authority is actually strengthening their taxation policies. Let's go into the specifics. When you enter into Myanmar, you first need to check whether your business is allowed or open to foreign investment. You're probably interested in going into Myanmar. Most businesses are allowed, but some are not. So you need to check this beforehand. Most of manufacturing is allowed, but there are certain businesses that can cause harm to the national interest, and those are restricted. Whether you want to know uh, after you check whether it is allowed to, uh, for foreign investment, you also need to uh, decide what type of a company you will be establishing, whether it's be, it'll be a foreign investing company and subject to the, uh, the uh, Myanmar investment law or not. I believe those companies that are entering KMIC will be covered by the MIL, because we're talking about MIC invested companies. You need to be registered, but you also need a permit from MIC. Because that area allows you to be exempt from corporate tax for five years if you get MIC approval. And for manufacturing, the non-service companies uh, will be eligible for MIC approval. If you get MIC approval, you are exempt from all customs duties on equipments and other machinery that you bring in to the country. The customs is usually about 10%, so it is a great benefit. Other than MIC investment, uh, what other forms of uh, companies exist for investment? CRO is Companies Registration Office. In the case of Chipyong Myanmar, it is a 100% wholly owned company, so it's a consultant company. Chipyong Myanmar is not an MIC company, it's a CRO company. In this case, it is not subject to the uh, MIL. It is only subject to the uh, Myanmar company uh, law. Now I'll skip a few slides and talk about the uh, Myanmar company law. Uh, you don't have to know about what used to be, so it's convenient. Basically, in the past, if a foreigner uh, acquired even a single stock, it was considered a foreign company. And that meant that company could not purchase any real estate. As a result, it could not acquire any uh, property. What problem does this cause? I'm an M&A lawyer, and for M&A, you need to acquire shares, but that itself was not allowed. It's not allowed, but as soon as you buy that, that company becomes a foreign company. So that company has to give up its real estate or have it forfeited by uh, the government. But the 
now the law has been changed, so the foreigners can acquire up to 35% ownership and still maintain the status of a local company. And uh, now a single uh, shareholder company is allowed. This used to be two in the past. Furthermore, you had have uh, at least one ordinary resident director in the company. The fiduciary duty clause, which is in all modern uh, company law, is also included. The fiduciary clause has been introduced. That means the directors need to be more careful in uh, agreeing to become a director. The second change that took place was that different classes of stocks are now issued. Preferred stocks, redeemable stocks, and other different types of stocks will be issued to raise capital. Mr. Hong talked about this earlier. Reduction, capital reduction is also possible under certain conditions. So that can be a way to recover capital. Safeguarding minority shareholders is another change that took place. It has been strengthened. The clause has been strengthened, so better protection is provided to minority shareholders. I have about five minutes to cover the tax system, the tax system and uh, labor-related uh, matters. The uh, Myanmar tax system is similar to Korea. There uh, are corporate income tax, personal income tax, withholding tax, commercial tax, and stamp duty tax. Uh, the uh, income tax rate is 25 percent, and it is paid by uh, every quarter. You have capital gains tax, which is set at 10 percent. In the past, the non-residents uh, had to pay about 40 percent capital gains tax, but that has been lowered to 10 percent. For personal income tax, the important thing is that it is basically a progressive uh, tax, and uh, when it comes to 30 million sat, uh, which is about 25 million won, uh, will be subject to 25 percent tax. Other than that, uh, after that, it is based on tax intervals. In uh, the case of workers, uh, the personal income tax is paid as a withholding tax, and at the end of the year, you can uh, uh, file a tax return. And the excess paid in tax will be returned. In Myanmar, withholding tax has been implemented quite widely, but nowadays uh, regulation has been relaxed. So withholding tax has been strengthened only for non residents, and withholding tax for residents have been a little bit deregulated, a little bit relaxed. This is commercial tax, which is similar to the value added tax of Korea. Uh, Myanmar does not have a VAT, but we do have what we call a commercial tax. 5% of all transactions are paid in as commercial tax, but after it exceeds a certain threshold, it can be returned to that. It is 5% for most transactions, especially sales. Uh, uh, Myanmar has what they call a stamp duty tax, which is quite different uh, from Korea. It was introduced in the late 19th century. It is levied on all transactions and contracts. So stamp has to be attached and duty paid. For example, all rental agreements, lease agreements has to have a stamp attached to it. If uh, the, the parties fail to do so, they are subject to a penalty of three times, threefold the original stamp duty. I thought I might not have enough time to cover the uh, labor and uh, employment part fully, so I'd like to ask you to refer to the material, but I'll only 
point out what is uh, very different from Korea. In the uh, Labor Standard Act is called the Factory Act in Myanmar. It was enacted in the 1950s. And for fact, uh, the shop and workplace law is applied to factory workers. There's a slight difference here, uh, what, but recently the Ministry of uh, Labor and Employment introduced a standard uh, uh, contract for workers, and here in the past you could terminate a worker without any reason, but this has changed. In the future, you cannot uh, terminate a worker without justifiable cause. These are the newly introduced clauses. For wage, uh, I think we can skip that. Uh, we, uh, the minimum wage was raised by 30 percent in uh, 2018, 33 percent, but it is still a very low level, nevertheless. But if you uh, do not comply with the minimum wage uh, rule, you will be penalized. I don't have much time. Uh, I'll leave you to refer to the material for the latter part of my presentation. Myanmar has what they call a severance compensation uh, payment. In the case of Korea, one month worth of salary is paid out as severance pay. In the case of Myanmar, uh, about half the amount is required to be paid out as severance pay. Um, I wasn't able to fully cover all the material that I have prepared, but uh, in the case of Myanmar, a lot of the laws are, have shortfalls, so you need to make sure to do a lot of research before you enter into Myanmar as an investor. I will conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. So we've listened to information uh, regarding the legal aspect from uh, Mr. Ko Sehun. Now I'd like to give you some information about the Q&A session. Due to COVID-19, uh, we have more online participants uh, due to the COVID situation, so we expect that there will be many questions from the online participants. So we'd like to ask you to access the homepage and give us your written questions there. So please come to mykmic.com and you can enter your questions there and we will respond to your questions uh, following that process. Now we will move on to the CSR video and then we will conclude the session after that. Thank you very much for your participation. At around six times the size of South Korea and the biggest country in Southeast Asia, Myanmar has a population similar to that of South Korea. Welcome to Takeda 32 Primary School, which was renovated by LH. LH CEO Byung Chung Hoon went to Takeda 32 Primary School for CSR reasons, simply to donate stationery to the students. However, when he saw the bad condition of the school's playground, he immediately decided to improve it. LH also created a futsal pitch for the school. Moreover, LH has pledged to support a Myanmar school every year by improving the educational environment through the LH HOPE project. Doing this is close to LH's field of expertise, 
so the company can help Myanmar by doing what it does best. Education is extremely important in a developing country like Myanmar, so LH would like to help the nation's youth study in improved conditions. ตมากก็อมมากก็ต้องเส้นนี้ตองเกตะမျိုးနေจ้ามาจ้าอุ้งเสียมาจีโทมามาลุ่นဖြစ်ပါတယ်ရှင်ကျမတို့ကြောင်